Sean? Power area. We'll pull the, pull the lever up. We'll go ahead and call the Wilmer City Council work session for Tuesday, January 16th to order. Is anybody from the public that wishes to address the council during the work session? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go to the, <coughs> the second item on the agenda, which is the City Hall project update. Mr. Holland. <coughs> Electric. Um, Mayor and Council, tonight uh, we we're going to lead a discussion and talk about the City Hall project. Um, as you know, the City Hall project's the number one item in our capital uh, projects for 2018. And so it's the first of the year, and we're here in, in our uh, first month. And tonight, I would like to hopefully get some consensus from the council to move forward. And I will bring it back up. Uh, I'm going to introduce the architect here in a minute, and then we're going to have our uh, uh, planner, uh, Bruce, come up and talk about some locations. And then I'll come back up, and then I'm going to talk about a concept of uh, the downtown and what could happen with a government campus. And so there's no decisions tonight as far as a location or cost or anything like that. What we're looking for is some direction to move forward. And the first step in that is hiring an architect to get this ball rolling. And so uh, Mr. Ingen is going to talk about that process and how that happens when you build a, any new facility. But I, I also want to say that I talked to staff this morning about this and I want to say something that I think is relevant in that this council in 2017 probably completed the largest financial transaction in the history of the city of Wilmer. <clears throat> And I've only been here seven months, and I can say that because it was so huge and so monumental. And so I'm very proud of this council and the forward thinking and their ability to get things done. And I will also note that sometimes those similar transactions can take years to accomplish, yet this council, working with the hospital board, was able to do it in about six months. So I commend you with that. Along with that, what we're proposing tonight is we're talking about a city hall. And some people don't really get excited about that. You say, I'm going to build a city hall. But it also leads that I do get excited. I get energized about the concept of that because it's not just a city hall. We're looking at furthering the development, the economic uh, vitality, the sense of community in Wilmer. And that's the way I look at it. And so to me, this is very, very important. And I think this council, I've talked to some people over the last month and they said, you know, this is the council that can make that happen. They believe in this council, they believe in this community, and I hope that we can move forward with this. We're going to cover several different concepts, but we're going to bring back the downtown that could basically keep it alive for the next 50 to 100 years if we do it right, or at least do the step in the right direction. So I want you to think about that. And like I said, at the end, I'm going to come back up and I'm going to show a, a picture of the downtown and talk about something, my observation, as someone who actually, you know, works there every day and drives it and parks and walks and sees different things. And then also combine that with what other communities across America have done, because it's not really an original idea on my behalf. It's something, a concept that's used throughout the United States. And it's a good model that other people have found successful. But with that, we will bring up Mr. Ingen, and he's going to talk about the project and how we can work with the community and with staff and with you uh, to get this project started. Mayor, Council, we're happy to have some time with you. Uh, 
we're going to walk through the first part of this handout that I think everybody has and has looked at. And we could do this informally. If, if anybody has any questions on the parts, we can talk. We can take the questions right when we're talking about them. Andy has several addition, additional copies here you can share with anybody who, who doesn't have a, access to one. <coughs> and starting on page three. Did you mean handout or in our? It, it's uh, in this, our this was. This was sent to us electronically. Oh, electronically. Yep, yep. So on our, on our page, his page three would be, um, I believe, page seven of 85 for us. It's resolving the facility needs, correct? Yes, yep. So page yep. seven of 85 is the page you'd want to be in. And maybe we can go on to the next page where we, we just have a summary on it. It was our number three at the bottom, but. Well, our, our pages are not numbered. So. Okay. So what does the top of your page say? We're resolving the facility needs. Okay, yep, that's, that's page seven of 85 for okay. us. Andy has some hard copies he can hand out too if somebody wants one. That might be beneficial. Okay. Right. Uh, what this, this is starting, it describes the steps of a typical, what most people think of an architectural service are the middle parts the basic services. But we've found over the years that many of our clients really look forward to having the service that we were talking about at the beginning of a project, how to start a project, and also m during construction when all the money is spent. And um, in summary, it, we look at starting a project with a big picture, working toward details. There are many, many decisions that need to be made, but we'll, we'll work with you and try to empower the council and the building committee and however the structure gets set together, help get information to make, to make uh, a decision. One of the things was mentioned that there's questions about when there should be community meetings and in community input and what is the best way to do that. I'd like to, we'd like to, to bring that into here too. Um, but the, in summary, the first part, what we call pre-design, is really stuff before what most people think the architectural design of a project is. But it's really the most important part. And we go on to the next page, um, project understanding. We like to talk, start a project with, it's more of a communication, but it gets at the big ideas. One of the issues on a, every project, there's several questions that need to be asked and answered. Why, what, where, when, and how. Uh, I'm just elaborating on what's on those pages there. But these are, these are the, some of the biggest questions. In some ways they sound very simple, but why is, you know, why are we building a city hall? Ike has mentioned some things, but I think it's important we talk about that. And when you have public meetings, it's, it's, you share people, because most people in the community are not aware why you need a city hall. You know, and so it's a good time to communicate what government does and how input works. You're looking at the executive part, the council chambers, an executive location for local government. You have offices where, where all the staff work. You've got other parts of, of, of things. And I think a good understanding of that is a good civics lesson for the community. Um, and the answer to these questions, why, you know, why is, why is a project necessary? You know, we start from the basics. What is ideal for a project pres presently and what in the future? Uh, it's hard to re understand a five-year plan for most businesses, and I think cities are getting to be the same way. But if we build a building, 50 years, I think you've been in that existing building for 40-some years, 45 years maybe. 50 years is not a long time for a brick-and-mortar building. What that tells you, it, it, however you're going to operate the city government, it'll change. And you could look back and summarize what are the changes that city hall has gone through in the last 45 years. I'm sure there's some records of that. Uh, where? And I guess Ike has commented on some of those questions. When? Some of these sort of happen together. And, and how? How often relates to how is it financed? Where does the money come from? And if there's, when you have a consensus of those items to everybody, you know, the project marks on simply. If there's not a consensus on that, you have to really go back and, and, and work on that. Um, this starts with, on the next page, program study, where you gather information, you, you write, not, not make drawings and pictures. You don't know a site, but what, is city, what, what are the things? Describe what you need for a city government. 
input of this from staff. The staff are the people that know most of the, how, how city government works best. Uh, council needs input continuously. You do need a building committee, a group that can work. It should be a, like, and I like to describe it as the smallest number of people that represents everybody. Ages, gender, profession, whatever it is. But you want as many ideas as possible. There should be several council members on it, but some staff people, but it could be other people too. But you know, you don't want a large number of people. You want people that can regularly meet in every committee meeting you get together so what's discussed there's a consistency and they keep coming to each meeting. So you, you evolve together. Uh, there's several stages and typically those stages would go for approval. It could, ideally that would be a, a, when the program is together and, uh, and, and maybe the next stage is the, is the um, um, architectural study. And we normally would start by doing diagrams. We call them bubble diagrams, so we don't talk of doors or anything, but it's uses, how do you relate people? And you can do several things. One would be circulation. How does the public come into your building? How did the staff circulate? Uh, security is an issue all public buildings are talking about today. How do, we, how do we handle that? And the simplest parts of security really are happening at this kind of a stage. You don't need even a floor plan for that. But you, you, you go through and you review it. And what we often see on a project like this, we would develop a series of these. And every building committee meeting is, is a brainstorming session and they evolve. And we would talk of circulation on a typical city hall. And the truth of most buildings, you try to have the public areas very close to the entrance. Uh, most people don't have to go more than 50 feet into your building or 100 feet in the building. You're having a meeting center, the council rooms right up at the entrance. It solves most of the security issues that way. And then you can invite people to come back in, to somebody's office, but they don't have to go back there unless you decide that they, they should. Um, and so at this stage, you come up with ideas. <coughs> Normally, we've developed a system where we'd have uh, a ver ver approaches, some approaches very different than others, and then versions. They evolve in steps. And it's a way to come through a lot of ideas fast and simply to get farther. The next part, which would be the letter D. Richard, just a minute, please. Yeah. Councilmember Plowman. Thank you. I'd just like to stop you right there. Yeah. Um, the, the initial diagram that you showed us, is that more representative of space allocation as opposed to actual layout? It is taking, you know, we, we, tipped, we tend to would make the, the, these bubbles approximate square footage. Okay. And its relationships. And in here, we're circling, obviously you can see circulation. It shows how you come in and out, the public are addressed, and there's, there's a verb, verbiage, you, you come through it. But we can show this, show a number of different things with this, <coughs> doing it this way. The colors represent sort of like departments. <clears throat> and, and you're trying to show the functioning of a building without worrying about doors and a lot of different things. So layout may change. Yeah. Obviously, it, in multiple it, different configurations, yeah. but this shows different allocations yeah. of space. I think the whole process is not necessarily lineal. You know, it's, it's more of an evolutionary thing. Okay. All right. It'd be w wonderful if you can just march on for a second, third, but that isn't how it normally would go. Thank you. Let's remember Nelson. So this is an example. This is not an example. Nothing. Well, to, it's just an example, yeah. It's just an example. It is an example. Because the drawings we got that were scanned, we couldn't read. I mean, oh, no. Oh, hard, I'm it sorry. It's hard yeah. to tell if this was an example you're presenting for Wilmer or this is just No, 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 no. It has nothing concept. to do with Wilmer or anything. Okay. But thank you. It's an example of what we would try to do. And it's sort of, it'd be one of multiple ones. I can't imagine you could come up with, you know, there'd be a, there's many approaches to solve your problem and your needs. And, and it's a simple way of getting at the main things and show the bigger concepts, the bigger picture. And it can be, and this, the way this is shown, this is showing sort of like departments, and you can sort of imply some circulation. But I think in a city hall, you'd also look at the experience early. What is the experience of a typical citizen coming to get served, get their, meet their needs at the city hall? How the staff does it? And security, how all these things intertwine. Um, I, could we make sure and get a copy of this to everybody? Um, you guys probably didn't look at how terrible this copied. Oh. I mean, 
You can hardly you see it, so. It. You gave up. Can you make sure that we all get a copy of it, please? <clears throat> I was going to bring a PowerPoint, but uh, we should have done that. I'm sorry. Uh, the next one is an estimate of probable cost. Cost is something most people we work with, the, first, the second question they'll ask is, what is the cost? <laughs> and, you know, in, in every project, our approach to that is you have to manage the project cost all the way through the project. Because as the project evolves, costs can change. And most projects, they go up, they get bigger, they get smaller, they change. So you really want, the key issue is managing project cost. And when you make decisions, it'd be nice, to, you can make a better decision if you have estimates of how they go. These are estimates, they aren't firm prices, they're not firm bids, but you have some numbers so you get a ballpark picture of what's happening as you're going on. And if you make decisions to make something bigger or more expensive or something or less expensive, the budget changes. And I think this is at the stage where it would make some sense to have a, a public meeting, you know, where you have information. The, the program you write, you have input from the staff, input from the council, uh, you're describing how it is now. One of the key issues up early there too is, this is maybe you, you develop a plan for this moment what we need, but also we need to look at five, 10, 20 years from now. The building will be around and you know, I don't think anybody can tell you exactly what, how government will be in five or 10, 20 years, but I think you can speculate some changes and so maybe there's some ranges. And so flexibility, you want flexibility and there's several ways you can plan flexibility in. Um, but you think, but you do want it functioning well for day one. And maybe, and I think you can come up with some assumptions of how local government will be provided and what some changes might be so that at least you, you're flexible. You don't want the building to dictate how you deliver services. You want the building to flexible that if you, if there's a better, if you come up with a better way in the future for something, you, you want the building to be accommodating to that. A public meeting with, the, with everybody, the whole citizens is good, but you should have an agenda, you should have some information for them. Because if you just ask them what a city hall is, you know, it, it's, it'd be hard to pull it together. But if you can have some things and they can disagree with it or something, but they're, they're presented with something, people <coughs> respond better if some, they receive a presentation and then you discuss it. And many times I would see, like when you're doing these bubble diagrams, there's multiple ones. You know, I, I've virtually never done a project like this with one, two. We've done uh, many versions of them, but they evolve. And then eventually um, you end up with where you want to be. The next stage is really... Yes. Okay, so if we were going to pursue um, the possibility of a local option sales tax, would it be at this point? Okay. When we're giving the information to the public and the... And then... Yeah, the uh, um, City Hall would not be an option for a local option sales tax. Other things in our facilities plan, maybe, but the city hall would not be something that would qualify for a local option sales tax. Okay, so even if this building incorporated the council chambers and the community center and, and the city offices. So the portions that would be a re, have a regional benefit, those could be under the local option sales tax depending upon what the final design ends up looking like. But generally speaking, just the city hall function itself would not be applicable. Now, if you had space for mid-Minnesota and you had space for other ancillary services, um, if you move RAC 8 back into city hall, those types of things, because that has a regional impact, then you may be able to consider it. We'd have to get an opinion from the attorney on that. But at this point, we would not consider the city hall proper eligible for local option sales tax. The way that I read the law, of course, we could discuss that and get further input on that, but, but uh, that's the way I read it. I don't know. Really, the next stage is what we call schematic design. The byproduct of that is actually more of what you think is a traditional floor plan. It may have furniture and different things, but you can actually see it, what it works. It would also have uh, uh, a site is selected. It's, it's the right location. There's a floor plan. There's sketches of what it looks like. Uh, building code summary on it, uh, those issues are 
how they could work out, and a revised estimate of cost. But it gives you the information, and that's really the stage where I think a public meeting might, they, you know, this, they, they'd be interested in that. This is where it's going, and sometimes there's more than one option that's being developed. Typically, on a project like that, it wouldn't be only one plan. Typically, you evolve and you change it, and there's certainly a lot of details. And it's not as if this is the exact plan that you're going to build. Because all the way through here, there's, there's typically an evolutionary process, but you want the bigger decisions made. In the first part, that pre-design, you know, you, you know how many people you're going to accommodate, offices, the council room, how many, what's the size of it, how many people should accommodate. Some of those are tweaked later on too, but you, you want to try to think about those big picture de decisions. And so when you're getting into the details, it's, it's really uh, just defining the building. The next stage, the design development, we really refine all the, the details. It describes how the uh, mechanical system works, the electrical uh, technology, um, maybe a security, obviously, building code. Um, <clears throat> and it has a lot of the drawings you expect to see in an architectural set, but it doesn't have all the details yet. And then there's a revised estimate. And then the, the third one, the next stage is construction documents. These are the detail plans and specs that you build a building from. Um, and these are things that the architect and their engineers really do more by themselves and work out, but there's still a series of things to review with your building committee. Um, and I think uh, on, on a typical city, one of the things would be your maintenance staff always should have input. There's things that they'll be involved with. Uh, security will be an issue. You've got all your staff departments. They, have, they, they should have a, a say of what an understanding of what's going on, because largely that's where, where the, that gets to be the meat of the construction contract, and that's really where, uh, that's what you're going to be building now. And so that's the time that you really want a final, that they, they really buy into this, this is what we're doing. This evolves into bidding and negotiating, getting the public bidding project. Uh, um, there's a process that's stipulated and, and that's, uh, that just evolves. The outcome of that is uh, basically contractors and trade contractors that will build your building. Construction administration, we would work as your agent during construction. Uh, we would have public construction, meet regular progress meetings uh, and uh, the city, it's good that there's a representative, somebody who can chair things back and forth and under no one. We'd have minutes of those meetings and those minutes are always public or they're, they're passed on to our contact in, in the city. And normally I think they're shared with the council or whatever work there. We had a, a thing at the end, post occupancy. And, and what happens today, virtually never, you know, there's, they use a the term when, Rather than final completion, it's substantial complete. Substantial complete means that the owner can use the building for its intended purpose. But there's a, a warranty period for a number of things. And uh, going through the first year, there's a, by statute, there's a warranty for everything in construction. And there's extended warranties for pieces. But during the first year, it's not unusual that some doors warp. Uh, hardware may not work for a while. Mechanical assist, something happens. But all of those kind of things, what we really want to do is, is, is help get that communication right to the contractors and manufacturers so that they can be addressed promptly. Uh, and there is a warranty period for different things. And uh, I know we've been contacted 10 years after a building is built and the hardware, they say it didn't work from the first day. You know, the, something happened. But during the warranty period, those, that's you've got a remedy, but 10 years later, you don't. And so it's really good to be timely on that. And we like to, we actually send out a letter at 10 months or something so that people are reminded to, to, to bring to some, everybody's attention. Um, that's just a summary. Is there any summary on any questions of? Uh, any questions on the process that Ingen is proposing us to consider? Uh, for this. Councilor Plowman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, maybe not specific uh, for AM, but for our city administrator. <coughs> have we, 
In terms of uh, contracting with a design firm, um, not that I'm in favor of it or whatever, just, just neutrally, um, is this something that, do we put a, an RFP out? Does the city put an RFP out? Do we contact local companies first? How was that decision made? My understanding here in Minnesota, it, it's not necessary to put out an RFP, and you can do that directly without a bid. So it's your option. We can certainly bid out the process and uh, do you know an RFP, or we can just direct contract uh, with uh, Ingen, for example. Okay. Well, I so guess that's a council decision. Could make that. Okay. Well, and my 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 personal opinion of that is I I think projects like this, especially dealing with um, small to mid-sized cities, I think there's a lot of benefits to going with local companies, local design companies, especially when they're this local to where this project may be because they have such a vested interest in the in the community and their work is is a showcase of of what they're doing so i think there's a lot of uh benefits here to having um a firm presenting to us that's that's possibly going to be so close to this project um both physically and metaphorically i guess so thank you for your time in the presentation thank you any other questions oh, from Nelson. thank you mayor just a approximate um, timelines that you see for something like this. That's a good question. That's the number. That's probably the second, third question everybody asks. Um, I think the front part of a project always takes a lot longer than people think. When we start getting into those issues, people start really thinking, "Well, maybe we can do this part of our our operation a little differently," and 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 staff are rethinking, and and management is is rethinking, and council are rethinking. Uh, I know we've worked with many clients that, well, in a month or two we can do this. You know, we start going, but then, you know, it's not that we're just telling you what, it, it, we're asking you questions and, and coming back with answers, and most of the answers cause you to think, and, and, and it's not just a lineal process. Uh, we would start with a goal in mind of time, but uh, we typically would caution that, you know, if it goes over, it has to go over. You know, you, 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 you've got to get through and be comfortable with the answers. Um, six months would be much more common than a month, okay. but we can start with three or four months. And I think that'd be great. You made a statement too about um, finding different ways to do that. Is that something you would bring to the table also? Because if I do my work every day, I'm used to doing my work the same way every day, but I That's would correct. assume that in your case you have other examples of maybe there's a better way or an easier way or a more efficient way to do I think things. most clients we work with you, you go through and we meet with them. You, 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 we could get document, a very good documentation of how they do, do it today. Five years from now, it's hard, but really how, what they can do. Technology has turned <coughs> every, our business upside down. We've changed our off, job descriptions every five years since we've been in business. And I think, you know, that's normal. And technology is driving part of that. And I think technology is going to be driving city government too. How it's going to be doing it, that's, you know, it's a little more gray. We don't necessarily have all the answers, but I think we'll ask questions, and, and those are things that people want time to think about and study and learn from what other people are doing. I am sure you have access to some other cities that have gone through these same issues. It's not that your Wilmer is the only city government that's rethinking all these things, but this gives you an opportunity to really set the stage for the next 50 years. And you really want it as open, and many times that's what takes the time, because staff has to come together and rethink the, the jobs. Um, we've done projects where, um, you know, you hire a human resource person to do a, a consultant to do a, some kind of a human study because job descriptions are changing. Some people don't like, you know, the change. If that's something that should be done and there's good reasons for it, maybe that makes sense. And it does, it can relate. You don't want, you want everybody to be behind your project. And it's better to buy a little more time if, if something works out the right way. Is that a roundabout answer that it satisfies is. you? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ingen, have you done any city halls or municipal? We've done a series. Of, we were just hired recently for Marshall for a new city hall. Okay. And uh, they're really at the same stage that you are. We've been hired for a while. Um, 
they're trying to get a, <laughs> uh, even getting a building a facility committee to gather, and, and I think they want a presentation just like what we're talking about here. We uh, didn't do Litchfield or Hutchinson. When we didn't do those, no. 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 Okay. I know the one in Hutchinson's pretty nice. Yeah. Litchfield's small, but it's yeah. nice too. Each one will be a little different. Yeah. Thank you. Richard, thank you for your thank presentation. You. Andy, thank you for being here as well. Um, the next part of the presentation will go to our Planning and Development Director, uh, Mr. Bruce Peterson. Mayor Kelvin, members of the council, um, just to get you thinking about possible sites, we've thrown out a few options for downtown sites and uh, we'll go through those one at a time. The first one that's up on the screen here shows the possibility of constructing a new city hall building directly south of the existing city hall building. Um, it would call for the termination of Becker Avenue mid-block and uh, leaves enough room there for a 10,000 square foot footprint and the ability to obviously go up from there. Um, this, is, this is a suggestion that ties in well with the whole campus idea that um, Mr. Holland will talk about in a little bit. You'll note that it shows the uh, existing city hall being demolished and replaced as parking. This is a, I, th I think a very workable plan. There's a few utility issues to deal with, some storm sewer issues that have to be dealt with. Um, we need to get uh, some public buy-in on the whole concept of closing or terminating Becker Avenue. That's been discussed in the past. And uh, in the past, the county was not very supportive of that, but with the county's plans to exit the downtown with the courthouse, I don't think that should be an issue any longer. Um, this, this drawing here also shows the existence of the Hardware Hank building that the council had looked at previously. Uh, that building remains unsold and that's just under 18,000 square feet on multiple levels. And uh, if, uh, if that remains there, there's potential for reuse of that building as well. We move to the next slide. Bruce, just a minute, please. Okay. Councilmember Schwantes. Thank you. Do you know what the timeline is for the county to be um, exiting downtown? What is their timeline? I do not know. Um, it hasn't received a lot of attention in the last year or so. Uh, they have the okay. site. They own the site by Midwest, and they've had some <coughs> preliminary drawings, preliminary work done for that site. So um, I don't think they're in the project development stage yet. I don't think they have any architectural drawings, but they've definitely looked at different options for that site. So Okay. I was just wondering if something if I had to guess I'd up, say so. three to okay. five years. That's the best. Councilman Nelson. Just to piggyback off to, off from that question, they've not made a commitment to leave downtown yet, have they? They haven't I mean they've talked about it conceptually, but they haven't actually made a commitment to leave. Have they? Yeah I to me, the commitment would be made as soon as they say we want a building permit for a new building. To me, that's, that's when they really commit. Until that time, they're just uh, testing the waters. Or if they would get deep into architectural design and project development, then I think that would show they're committed to leave downtown. Um, I won't speak for them, but they've certainly given that message to the city over and over in the past that it is their intention to build out at the uh, north end of the Midwest campus. Okay. The second question that I have is on Becker Avenue. I believe the downtown plan actually makes Becker Avenue the way to get into downtown from the west off from 7th Street to Becker Avenue um, with that. So I'm curious how that would be proposed to change to eliminate Becker Avenue when that's well, been turned down multiple times before? Becker Avenue in the downtown plan is one, one way into the downtown. We've still got Litchfield Avenue, we still have Trot Avenue. Uh, Becker Avenue was chosen as what they called the convertible street that could convert to uh, festival uses and different things. So most of the physical changes that are part of the downtown plan occur on Becker Avenue but I'm not sure the plan itself uh, states that it's critical to have that access all the way through. In fact, the 
uh, gateways are at 7th Street and Litchfield Avenue and then ultimately going down to Trot and coming in simply because those are through streets and if you come on Becker you've got a stop sign every block and so that's less conducive to uh, good access. So. Uh, the second drawing is the property on Highway 12 between Highway 12 and Benson Avenue just west of 2nd Street Southwest. Um, it's the site of the former Nelson Cleaners. And again, there's room on this site for a 10,000 square foot footprint. And it's adjacent to a half block of existing public parking uh, that would certainly uh, be beneficial for this use. And it also provides for the addition of about 22 or 24 additional parking spaces on that site, meeting the current downtown design <coughs> standards. <coughs> This site does not lend itself to inclusion in any type of a campus, uh, but what would work very well for a standalone city hall. The third option that we have sketched out is one that would uh, require a little longer time frame. This is on the half block that the city owns that is currently used by Rice Hospital for parking. It's directly east of the ambulance garage. Um, the city has the ability to get that half block back, but under the terms of the agreement with Rice, uh, we'd agreed that we would give them two years uh, to find alternative parking locations, so that would slow the project down. Um, I don't believe that this site is the best site for government uses, I think, with the exposure and um, its proximity to First Street, it's much better for commercial development for private development and generating taxes for the future. It is, however, an option that does provide significant parking. Um, there are some access issues with this, certainly from the uh, south off of Trot. Um, it would be extremely difficult to access the site because of the geometrics of Trot Avenue. Um, it could be accessed from 2nd Street and from uh, Becker Avenue but from 2nd Street, you'd have to uh, design an entryway so that traffic could be carried through the Rice Hospital property to get back to this site. And I believe all the issues regarding easements and cross easements um, are not addressed in detail, but are mentioned in the agreement uh, with the Rice Hospital agreement. So that would not be an issue should this be the site that's selected. Those were put on paper just to give the council an idea of what could happen downtown. Are there additional sites that could work? Possibly. Are there publicly owned sites that we have access to? Uh, not in addition to what we've shown you, unless you want to go to Block 50 and try to do something uh, between their library and Rice Hospital. There's all sorts of room there, but there again, that's going to raise some uh, other parking concerns for the downtown. So. Um, I think in our conversations internally, we think there's some real value to keeping the project downtown. I've spoken with members of the business community. They don't necessarily share that philosophy. Their big concern is let's just put it somewhere where it's very accessible and where we have the ability to expand. I think a couple of these sites downtown certainly offer that, but um, I, I think a City Hall is an important structure downtown. It's important. It's an important use. And it's really important that government view itself as an anchor to the central business district. So take any questions. Well, I have a couple of thoughts I would share with you. I agree that this should be downtown. I think it makes a very um, loud statement to the community that we believe in our downtown and, and I, I just believe City Hall should be downtown. I'm surprised there isn't a fourth alternative. One of the things that really energized me at least in regard to the opportunity of the, I mean when we went and looked at the Hardware Hank building and, um, and talked about the City Hall really rather seriously, that was one of the considerations and its proximity being right back to, backed up to the auditorium and knowing that the auditorium is going to need some work and the idea that maybe we could create a community center auditorium city hall complex in that area 
And, and that's not one of the options that are here. Can you tell us why that was not? Yeah, um, those are, okay. what, what was given was three new options. The hardware Hank building remains an option just by virtue of its uh, existence. And we've talked about that internally and okay. uh, believe that the council would warrant that that was subject to some additional scrutiny. So it's not dismissed as an option. Okay. It's just not presented as a new building option. And then I would note that I agree with your comments that the option on First Street and the Rice Hospital parking lot, I'll just call it, um, just does not seem like a very good option to me because you are putting prime real estate for private development and good property tax revenues for us and taking it off those, pay, those roles. And so I agree with your decision or your comment in regard to that. Thank you. Councilmember Nelson. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, First, I, I just need to say I'm supportive of a new city hall. Um, I'm supportive of, of a process to figure it out. I'm not supportive of picking a site with that. I think the presentation that was done by Ingen and Associates engages the community and perhaps we need to listen. Downtown feels like the right place long term for city hall to be, but maybe that's not what our community thinks. And for us to just pick these locations, um, I think we need to know what we need in a building, first of all, before we pick a location. And um, with that, I think there's another possibility of tearing down the city hall where it is right now and rebuilding in the same location to make it attached to the auditorium that could provide um, accessibility to that building and the historic preservation of a building that's very important to our community. So I support a new city hall. <coughs> I support going through a process to establish that, but I certainly don't support picking a location at this time. Well, the intent of the options that were put up on the screen tonight was not to drive a particular location. We've got some preferences internally but we understand it is the council's decision to make, and it certainly wasn't intended to show that these are the only options uh, that are available. We have discussed internally demolition of City Hall, operating off premises with city functions for a period of time, and building on the same site. We have talked about that option, and uh, that too would lend itself very well to a campus, uh, campus effect in that area. So. Um. The, the concept of having a community center inside City Hall or attached to it, I think, I don't know what this community wants for a community center. I think the location we have for our community center is very valuable right now with all of the things that are going on. It's also very accessible. I'm not saying that we should leave downtown, but I think we need to be open to all the options. And I think if we walk through the process of determining what that building needs to be, it will help us to figure out where it should be. Just some discussion. Thank you, Bruce, for your presentation. Uh, one of the things that I was hoping to accomplish is I think that we can probably give direction to staff tonight on some properties or, or maybe a couple of these that are just, I mean, thanks for bringing them, but no thanks. Um, and I think that, you know, I understand that, you know, design the building or not design it, but talk about the building. But I mean, I think a couple of these locations just really aren't going to work. I mean, they could work because the footprint works, but that's the only reason they can work. So as we uh, listen to Mr. Holland on his <coughs> government complex idea, let's just think a little bit about are there one or two of these locations that we could say, you know, we should take those off the table even from consideration because the longer you leave them on the table, the more people noodle about it and it can end up then being counterproductive rather than being productive. So, Mr. Holland. Um, you know, before I talk about the, the drawing and, and my uncle, uh, you may have heard of him, uh, Frank Lloyd Holland, the architect. That's <laughs> 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 a little joke. <laughs> he uh, has he assisted me uh, in some concepts and uh, I, I am a, uh, you know, a closet designer, and so I, I wish I had went to school for that. But I want to tell you something about, about, I don't know, it was around Thanksgiving. I was standing out in front with the staff and uh, talking, and, and I don't know what got us on the subject, but I said, just imagine a year from now, 
you could be in your, you know, new city hall and, you know, it wouldn't be drafty and all the, you know, the issues that we have. And um, I won't tell who it was, but she looked at me and she said, I don't believe you, Ike. And I, you know, I thought she was joking. And I said, I said, no, I said, really? I said, you, can't you picture it? You know, I can see it. You know, we have a coffee pot, you know, that works and everything, you know. We'll have all these functioning things and a water fountain and, you know, toilets and it's not the size of a closet. Have you ever seen that bathroom that the men use? Anyway, it's really bad. But, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You know, we talk about, and tonight the mayor's going to talk about the energy and things. That's what I get excited about is I want staff to believe Right now, they don't believe. And we've got to get our staff behind things that they can see, that they can touch, and then most importantly, that they can achieve. And once we start to achieve and succeed, then that's where you get the momentum. And that's what I was, you know, talking about earlier. We've already got some momentum in 2017. 2017 was a remarkable year. And I don't think we can say it often enough. We need to hammer home the accomplishments and then continue that momentum into this next year. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, this is something that um, I drew up and it's a very old map. And I don't know how every town I go to, I always get the old Cowtown map from 1890. But you know, the, the engineering department um, gave this to me and I took a picture of it. Here, here is uh, the hospital. Uh, here's the fire department. The, these are both basically legal uh, buildings, uh, banking. Okay, here's where the new quick trip's gonna go in. Here's where uh, Highway 12, and this is our parking lot that we have there, the county facility. Uh, here is uh, the auditorium, current city hall, the county building the post office. This is the entertainment, although Mr. Ingen said, oh, I thought that E was for his building, but that stands for uh, E. He said, well, I'm in the entertainment district. So that's the barn theater and the brewery. My point of showing you this picture is that if you look at everything here, this in the yellow and the post office here and the fire, you see that about 50% of the downtown is government entity. So that's why I'm talking about a government campus creating a, uh, you know, the economic engine to keep the downtown going. And Mr. Ingen is correct. In five years with mobile apps and, and you know, uh, driverless cars and all these type of things, things are going to change. But I think that uh, you're always going to have a physical uh, building of a city hall. You're going to have a library. The library continues to evolve every year. And most importantly, we're going to have Karis Hospital. And so we need to keep the downtown viable. And so this is a concept to me that if we could build in this area that Bruce had outlined, and it, again, these are just starting points. I don't have the perfect idea, but I think I can give some ideas to start the conversation so that when we look at the auditorium here, and here's Hardware Hanks, if we were to purchase that building now, and there's additional parking, we would demolish the current city hall and build a new city hall between uh, the county building and our current location, block off the street, and then eventually take uh, ownership of the county building. So what we've done there is now you can look at this large piece of real estate that we're now consuming. And one of the reasons I like about taking possibility the ownership of Hardware Hanks is that there is a tie-in to the auditorium because some of the council has said we need to retain the auditorium. Other people in the council have said we need to retain ownership of the county building. We would accomplish both of those things some people have said that we need to have a museum for the uh, some military museum. Some have said we need a community center. All of these things could be possible at a very low cost, 
very low cost. And here's the most important thing that I really like is you don't have to get in a hurry. There's no, there's no need to get in a hurry, and you can apply for uh, grants uh, uh, for, you know, senior centers and community centers, and you can get USDA funds for those type of things. And so by purchasing this other real estate or taking ownership of it, it gives us time. Then at the same time, you have closed off the street, and... You know, you talk about walkable streets or pedestrian friendly. Those are, you know, buzzwords now. That's what I'm talking about is the downtown needs to be a place that you can go where you can walk from building to building. You know, people don't like to cross streets if they don't think it's safe. And that's why they get mad when they go downtown and if they have to cross a street and, and they think they're going to get hit but yet they park in Walmart and they walk three blocks. And you can get hit in Walmart parking lot at the same time. But the key to parking, I had a, a parking engineer told me a few years ago that people will, will park far away from a building depending on the length of time they're going to stay in that building. So if they're going to stay... 30 minutes to an hour, they'll walk three blocks. But if they're only going to be in there 10 minutes, then they want to park right up front. And that's the, the key to the psychology of parking. So having said that, and, and I talked a little bit about this on the radio this morning, is that if we can create this campus-type atmosphere, not only will we accomplish our city goals, but we'll also encourage the county, perhaps, or when the state has a facility, maybe they would relocate. Hopefully when Keras needs to uh, expand or develop, then they will do it in the downtown area. And then that will encourage that entertainment district uh, and our legal uh, buildings and bankers to stay downtown and encourage restaurants and other uh, you know, service facilities uh, for people during the day and in the evening. Also, lastly, I will say that with that entertainment district is something that I learned in Topeka, Kansas was during the day, it was a government complex. And you had all these government employees in parking. Then at night, they would all go home and it would convert into an entertainment district with theaters and bars and live music. And you had all that available parking. And so that's something that I think about here with that entertainment district. You have the available parking next to the hospital there that could uh, be utilized for that type of purpose. So again, this is just a concept. I'm not asking for anybody to say this is good or bad or anything like that. I'm just throwing that out there that as we go through this process that we might want to keep that you know, concept in mind. So, Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Holland or City Administrator? Okay, one of the things that I would like us to accomplish tonight is do we want to retain the services of an architect? And as we prepare to move this project forward, there are a number of different ways we can do this. One of them is we can do it internally, try to have staff operate and run it as much as possible. Or we can bring in an outside professional agency. Uh, Councilmember Plowman, is, Plowman has suggested either we use someone local or, you know, we as a council can decide that we want to go out on an RFP. Um, I think our city attorney would tell us that for professional services, we can contract that without having to do an RFP. Um, you know, when we take a look at people who have done this type of work within our community, um, you know, uh, Ingen Architects helped us with our... Uh, Civic Center, our expansion out there, and I believe everybody's happy with the product that we received there. And so when the initial discussions were starting, those were how those conversations started. So that's one thing I'd like us to do tonight, is decide, do we want to select an architect? Are we at the point where we want to do this? Do we want to noodle this a little bit more and kind of talk about it some more? Or are we ready to do that? Then the second piece I'd like to, us to do is that if there are of the four sites presented to us tonight, the three physical locations and then continuing leaving the Hardware Hank and Auditorium projects on the table, 
Are there any of those that we would really want to tell staff, take it off the table tonight? Don't even continue discussion on it. And um, I'd like the council to uh, have a discussion about that. I've got an opinion on that uh, personally, but uh, I'd like the council to, you know, are we headed in the right direction? Do you want to go a different direction? Do you want to speed this up? Do you want to slow it down? Um, what are you wanting to do? And then when we start moving down that path, as Mr. Ingen talked, we will get to the point where we'll start talking financing. And in the budget that I presented to you that you guys uh, preliminarily accepted was a new city hall, and on that it called for bonding. But I think that we've heard from our finance director that we have enough funds internally to fund a city hall without having to go outside and look for additional bonding monies. And I think we'll see that in our financial reports a little bit later on uh, tonight. So. Council, what do you want to consider doing here? Um, or do you want to just fold the cards and go home? I don't think anybody does, but you know, we need to talk about that if we do. So Council Member Osmus. Okay. A couple of different things, thank you. Um, first, I would start with eliminating some sites. We've already had some input. Um, the Rice Hospital parking lot, for the reasons stated, I would say we wouldn't go ahead with that because it is prime real estate. And um, I just don't think we want to cut into the parking uh, for, uh, sorry, for Karis, <laughs> for Karis Health. Um, the other site over on Benson Avenue, the old Nelson Laundry, to me that's too far removed. And then we're kind of landlocked. And um, there isn't <clears throat> any room for anything else there. So we're back to the present location. So that brings me into my second part is we seem to be really kind of focusing in on City Hall. When, when or how do we get to the, the discussion about the community center and the space or the room for that, if we did do hardware, Hank, how that would fit, and, um, or any place there, or does that go out in its present location? Maybe it gets connected to the Civic Center. Something, when, how do we have those discussions then? And what would we do with, this, with the courthouse when we talk about acquiring that? That's, right. that's I think, my points. Right. Um, thank you for your points. Um, I think uh, what I think would happen, and maybe Mr. Ingen could answer this better, but when we sat at the table and started talking about some of this, then that conversation would be, is there something that we want to do to bring the community center and the city hall together? That would organically happen as the conversation was happening. So if that's the direction the council is going to go, then that's going to expand that vision on what that complex is going to look like. Um, right now, we wanted to bring something to your table for you to discuss. And so we brought the city hall because the city hall was the easiest thing to bring to the table. Uh, to just start the conversation. So that's the reason that just the city hall came. Okay. Um, we did have a conversation as to whether we should bring both at the same time. And I felt that from what I heard from talking to council members that they weren't ready to have the conversation on both yet, but we probably were ready to have the conversation about the city hall. So I think that that will happen. Um, as far as locations, um, we can continue the discussion on that. And we can see where we end up with that. So, Councilmember Nelson. Thank you, Mayor Helen. I don't know how we pick a location. To me, if we pick a location, we've designed the project. I, I think we need to be better than that. I think we need to get the community engaged and to see does City Hall and Community Center make sense? Mm -hmm. Maybe it should just be City Hall. Then maybe it fits where that's at. But if we're going to pick a location now, and, and I'm you know, then why are we going to go through the process of engaging the community into what City Hall should be? I, I think the site will limit what we are capable of doing. I, I support that we need a new, new City Hall. I'm not sure whether it needs to be the community center also. I think we need to go through the process to determine that. And so I don't know how you pick a site when you don't know what it is you're going to build. And I'm not sure that I heard anybody say they were picking a site. I think what I heard them say is that 
they're not comfortable with certain locations, so you take those off the table so they're not under discussion. I don't think anybody's saying we're picking a site tonight. That's, I mean, I haven't heard that at all, that, that we're picking a site tonight. Well, I'm not suggesting we are or aren't picking a site. I just don't, I think we should leave the options open for what City Hall needs to be, and that might lend itself to a location. And maybe it isn't downtown. Maybe it's somewhere else. But um, it sounds to me like we're trying to get back to a site that we looked at and let's figure out a way that we can make that work. Councilmember Fagerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I had, uh, agree with Councilperson Osmus, Nelson property and First Street sites should be eliminated. Um, one other thing, we're not going to work with the utilities because they're looking at a new facility either. That plan is, is dead. Well, those discussions will happen as we start going through okay. this process. All right. Um, and then uh, one other thing is on a community center, I have talked with the Candy Mall, and they're willing to uh, rent out part of the Kmart, how much space we need, and we can work out a lease with them. What better way to get 30 to 50 people into the candy mall every day mm -hmm. to help uh, the business uh, climate? So, I mean, we have options. Oh, yeah. But I like uh, where City Hall is now, either build to the south or take the current one down and build there. So. Okay. Councilmember Nelson followed by, I'm sorry, Councilmember Plowman followed by Christensen in Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll echo what's been said already. I think the First Street location and the, uh, the Benson Avenue location, probably not the, le not the best fit from a visionary standpoint because it leaves us the least amount of options for uh, design and, and whatnot. Um, I think the concept of a, of a governmental campus downtown is the most uh, interesting because it's, uh, it offers us the most amount of options there's there's a lot of options in that area because there's there's real estate there's square footage and when you have square footage um, that gives you possibilities to start to have these discussions and it, it doesn't limit you it doesn't put you in a box but you can start coming up with other stuff um, but it's also a very you know something like that would be a very bold aggressive approach and that would be a, a pretty proactive it would have to be a, a pretty proactive visionary thing um, on behalf of the city. I mean, that would be a, making a bold move um, and then leading charge. Now, there's, there's times to do that and there's times to not do that. But I think if that's something that we decide as a council that we want to do, I think that concept is probably one of the, you know, the concept that lends itself to that idea. And if the community backs it obviously i mean this is this is going to be the community city hall this right. is going to be the taxpayers building where their business gets done and um so keeping our options open i feel like that concept albeit aggressive um i think that lends the most options to that and i also think you know i don't want to i don't want to lock a site down i agree with council member nelson it's dangerous to to lock it down and paint ourselves into a corner so to speak but we also got to have, um, um, we don't want to spin our tires. We got to have a starting point. At some, at some point in the game, we got to have a starting point. And if the starting point um, is all discussion and not enough decision, we may be spinning our tires and it may cost us time. And uh, time is money. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen, followed by Fernand, uh, Elverano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All of this is very preliminary, <laughs> very, very preliminary. The first time it's been presented to us, we can't make any decisions on this tonight or probably in a week. Um, Councillor Fagley brought up the idea of the mall. I think the community center should be someplace where they don't have to cross the street, so downtown is probably out. Um, where it's at or the mall is fine, but uh, City Hall, we've got a lot to chew on here. Uh, there are probably a couple other sites that could be brought up too. Um, and we need to maybe have a meeting with the utilities board and sit down and say, hey, what are you going to do and where is it going to be at? Are you going to be over here or would you be uh, open to downtown so that we could share the building? 
uh, the campus idea is, is, is great. I mean, that's, that's probably the way it should be. Most cities are doing that. Uh, Sox Center's got everything on one block, fire department, uh, city hall, utilities, everything's right there. Um, and it's accessible to the public and there's parking <clears> there. <throat> but uh, again, this is preliminary and we, we need to meet again and, uh, uh, and, and discuss this more. We can't do it in just an hour here. It's a uh, lot to chew on. I like the ideas that have been floated around and uh, Mr. Ingen's very, very good at what he does and he's doing Marshall, so uh, that's probably a good option. Um, but let's, let's think about this. It's, my mind is just going 50 miles an hour right now on where else we could do this or how to do it. So let's take it a little slow like he suggested. You, you can't make all the decisions uh, immediately. So that's my point of view. Councilmember Elvarado. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I like the idea of, uh, as you use the term, noodling the idea. I think that a uh, number of us are, will be going out in public and having coffee with a number of people. Uh, they're going to ask us questions. I don't think that we're in a position to uh, nail anything down right now. I, I, I agree with Councilperson uh, uh, Nelson that we should uh, hear, hear what the public wants and find out uh, what their their vision is. Um, I, I think that um, there's a lot of um, good input that we're going to receive and we should be um, willing to hear what they have to say before we uh, make any uh, concrete decisions. But with that being said, I would also agree with uh, Council Member Plowman and Osmus and uh, Fagerly and I would take that uh, rice parking lot off the table because I think that should be um, for a commercial. Um, so I like the idea of uh, letting it simmer, uh, going to coffee, hearing what people have to say, um, and just letting it kind of simmer a little bit before we go um, too, too far into it. I agree with the con campus thing. Um, I also was wondering what uh, Councilperson uh, Osmus was asking about the um, government center, the courthouse. What, what are we going to do with that? I mean, if we, we should acquire it, what's, I don't want to have if a I white could, elephant. If I could, Mayor. Uh, um, you know, we've discussed um, everything from uh, demolishing it and turning it into additional parking to uh, using some of the office space on that first floor. I'm not very familiar with the building, but uh, there's, there are office spaces in there that could be converted into uh, uh, nonprofits. Uh, there are some that could even be converted into commercial space. Um, the courtrooms upstairs could be used as community rooms and rented out from everything from uh, a birthday party to weddings. Um, you know, uh, one in the Colorado uh, courthouse um, I worked on, uh, we converted one courtroom into a basically reception uh, facility, and it made money. And of course, we were making no money when it was set and empty, and then we rented it out. And then uh, in the basement, someone put in a microbrewery and actually sold beer in the former courthouse. So. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can use. And the one thing that I like about the hardware hanks and the, the county building is there is no hurry. You have plenty of time to look at all the different concepts and usage over the next, you know, few years. And then at the same time, you can start to apply for grants because when you start to get into those social service type of uh, facilities, there are grant money uh, uh, that is available. Uh, thank you. Um, I like the idea of uh, repurposing that uh, building. It's, it sounds pretty exciting. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that uh, Councilmember Osmos, <laughs> I've seen your finger go up. I'm not going to let you buy that easy. <laughs> okay, so on the timeline thing, as far as the city office building, you know, unless we have um, another water leak or it becomes that we can't deal with the mold issues <laughs> that, that they're presently dealing with, um, we might have some time. Um, the community center, how much life do we have? How many years do we have left um, 
on the roof on that building itself that we can limp along. Um, I'm just wondering how is that going to come into our conversation and our decision making? And, and that's a, a very good point. And um, I don't have that answer. And I wish uh, our engineer was here, public works director, to, could maybe give us some, a little more insight. But you're right. The timing on that community center needs to coincide with our projects. And so maybe I'm speaking a little bit. I'm being a little liberal. And we have plenty of time. Because in actuality, we need to keep moving along. Um, um, and so we don't want to get into a position where we're putting uh, a lot of money in HVAC, for example, or redoing a parking lot. That's one of the reasons that I did like the concept of keeping the auditorium, simply because this community has put a lot of money in that facility, and it would be a shame to uh, not continue to use that. But you're right. Uh, that would be something that, as we work through the process uh, with the uh, architect and with the community and the building, committee, uh, that should be part of the consideration. Council Member Schwantz is followed by Nelson. So I will confess I'm a little bit confused in the conversation that we're having because we said our facilities were a priority. This was something that we wanted to get done in this fiscal year. We put money aside in the budget to be able to do that. And my concern is when I hear, let's take a couple of years to do it, that tells me we're taking it off the shelf and we're not going to move forward. And that concerns me. Um, I, I think that this is something that we need to do thoughtfully and methodically and have that process in place. But I would like to have a sense that, yes, this is something we're committed to and we're going to move forward with it. And so let's start this process out. Am, am I... Am I misunderstanding the conversation? I think the conversation is moving it along. It's just where is that conversation going to go? And what I'm hearing is that there's a consensus to take the rice parking lot off the table. There's consensus to take the Highway 12 project off the table, but then to leave the rest of the community open for discussion and to bring that discussion to a head. That's what I'm hearing, and then I'm hearing that there might be some consensus on working with an architect to make that happen. I heard that at two different uh, conversations I heard that on. So that's kind of where I'm at with it, what I heard, um, but if that's not true, somebody's got to tell me, Councilmember Nelson. Thank you. Um, a, a couple of things, I think the community center as it is, um, is more of a senior facility. Is that what we're talking about? I don't think this community has had a chance to talk about what they want the future community center to be. And so maybe there's two different uses. Maybe there's two different locations. Maybe there's two, I don't know. But I think that's part of what we have to uncover. And I think there were several of us also that asked very pointed questions when we did the budget that I think there is an energy to move forward with this, but we need to do it right. And the money is in there in the budget to be for bonding. It is not capital dollars, and I think we need to be careful that what we are doing represents the future and not be short-sighted in saying we need to get it done in one year. Yes, we got to move it forward, and yes, we got to get it going, but I think we need to do it right. Councilman Rasmus. Thank you. I guess what I would like to see when I think about having to make some of these these decisions and to be able to present it to the community is I think if we're if we're in order to separate the possibility of combining them say like with the hardware Hank building I think we have to have a little bit of preliminary um, design on that is how much space would we need for City Hall how much would we need for council chambers? And then, is there even the possibility that there would be room for community center activities? And if there isn't, then, um, I mean, also, you know, talking about bringing Rack 8 over, if that can't handle all of those functions, then I think that's off the table then as a community center option. Um, then, then I think that helps us separate where we're going forward with a city hall, 
um, possibly Rack 8, those kinds of a, um, a concept, and the community center is a whole nother area. I mean, that's the, the only way I see those coming together is if we're able to link the two, the auditorium and the hardware hank, and somehow we're able to move, work that together for a community center. But I think we have to at least have some preliminary idea that that's feasible and that that could even work by space. Right. And this is where, you know, the chicken or the egg conversation, the one yeah. that we had when we were doing the budget, you know. Um, I'm going to keep bringing the projects even if you yeah. beat me up. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep bringing them. And uh, so that's where we're at right now is that we had to bring something yep. because if we don't bring anything, then we get criticized for not bringing anything. If we bring something with lines on paper, we get criticized for having lines on paper. And so that's not where I'm trying to get. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, I'm giving you a global approach here. And when I talked with staff, and staff and I met on this probably three or four different times, but when I talked with staff about this, I said we need to bring the global project and then let, you know, kind of the, the bone is hanging there. I'll start hanging some meat on it. So that's kind of where we're at is we're at the point of hanging the meat. And um, that's what I want us to do. I want us to keep moving forward. I mean, we did say this was a priority, and so we do need to move that forward. So, Councilmember Plowman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll try to be quick. Um, but I, I think to that point, I think uh, Mr. Engen, uh, as well as other architects and structural engineers and whatnot, would probably also agree that, um, you know, as vital as community input is, and that's going to be, you know, that's going to be what really shapes and molds this thing. But but somebody's got to put the chunk of clay on the table, so to yep. speak, and to just to begin the whole process by allowing the community um, at 100,000 feet, we're going to get, and I think he mentioned it, we're going to get 100 different possibilities, and that's, that's not going to lead us anywhere. <clears throat> I think at some point we are tasked, this is our job as council right. people, to give some options so that when the community does engage in the in the uh, in the process and, and participate, they have some options to choose from. Because if you walk in and the sky is the limit, well, guess what? Uh, you know, a hundred different people have a hundred different ideas, and that just makes it more difficult for everybody. So I think we got to find that that sweet spot. That's not not. Um, not clearly defining, okay, we got three options and it's going to be one of the three, nor is, you know, nor are we going to put a hundred different options on the table. We got to come together, coalesce, and, and put some parameters around it. And, and I'll echo what uh, Ms. Osmus said here that, um, you know, I think a professional firm would better help us do that. I think they would help us put some parameters but not close it in and tie us into one spot. And I think that's a good idea. Agreed. Okay, so um, I just want to see a nod of heads and that we're in agreement here. We're in agreement of removing from consideration the Highway to Wall project and the First Street project. Are we in agreement on that? Okay, so we have consensus there. Are we in agreement with hiring a professional firm to assist us in the process? At some point. Okay, so we have consensus on uh, hiring a professional firm. Um, we're, we're not voting. We don't vote during the, the work session. Um, and so we have consensus on removing those two. If the community comes back to us and tells us that they want those two back on the table, we'll put them back on the table. But as the council, we're saying, you know, we don't think, we think those two projects have a better location, uh, a better use for those two locations. Um, the rest of the community is wide open. Um, if we want to go out to the mall, I mean, I met with people this morning, and they want us to move City Hall to the mall. Um, and, you know, you said you talked to somebody, and they wanted uh, to put the community center at the mall. And so, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of conversations happening after Mr. Holland was on the radio today. I mean, you know, my phone was ringing off the hook and, you know, people were saying, I want this, I want that, I want the other things. So, so, and that's good. That's what we want is we want the community to talk to us. That's what we want. So we're not making any decisions and we're not, I don't think you hired an excavator yet to my knowledge. <laughs> um, and so, and I don't think you have any uh, building supplies on order. So I think we're good there. So, well, okay. Well, that's a question. So. 
Okay, so we're going to move forward with that. Mr. Uh, Council Member Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what will be the scope of the architect if we hire him presently? I think it's kind of preliminary right now. I mean, what... Right. what, what that would have to come back to us to hire the architect, mm -hmm. and so but what will be the scope. I mean, if, if we, Mr. Holland will develop that scope of work, and then bring it back to us for consideration. Right. On what that scope of work is. Councilmember Nelson. Just for clarification, I mean, we received a proposal, so I would I would hope that we would be looking at if we're going to use an architect that we're going to allow them to go through the process. That it's I mean. I'm not was, following your question. Well, what was presented is a draft of kind of a design process. So right. is that oh, yeah. the scope that's being brought back to us? Yes. I don't think that's been identified yet totally, no. has it? Well, I mean, maybe not verbatim or line by line, but yes, that's basically, you know, what we're talking about is okay. going through that process. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen, are you okay with that? I guess they'll have to be, yeah. Oh, we aren't voting on it. No. Okay. Do we have consensus to move to the next agenda item? Okay, our next agenda item is declaring the city of Wilmer as a welcoming city and a welcoming city resolution. <laughs> this was an item that Council Member Meske had asked us to bring back to the work session. This evening, Council Member Meske is unable to be here. He's not feeling well. He sent an email this morning. Um, talked to another council member, had talked with him yesterday, and he was not feeling well yesterday as well. So um, that bug is going around. So uh, with that, uh, uh, Judy, maybe you can uh, read the resolution that as it's been presented, as it uh, was recommended for approval, um, and then there can be discussion by the council on that. <clears throat> okay, the resolution states, uh, it's titled, Declaring the City of Walmer as a Welcoming City. It states, whereas the City of Walmer and the surrounding area is stronger when all community residents are unified, engaged, and valued as both neighbors and contributors to the public good. Whereas in further recognition of the great ideal of equality and freedom as outlined in the United States Constitution and amendments. Whereas in pursuit of a community in which all residents without regard to age, gender, sexual orientation, <clears throat> socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, religion, or country of origin should be free to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Now therefore be it resolved that the city, Wilmer City Council, as representative of the city of Wilmer, hereby declare and resolve the city of Wilmer to be a welcoming city to all who wish to come and contribute to the public good and future success of the community. <clears throat> okay, so um, this was a recommendation that came to us from Isaiah, which is a, a community faith-based organization, and when they made their presentation to council, are there any council members that have any comments in regards to this? Councilmember Alvarado. Um, I think it's um, good for our, our community. Uh, Wilmer uh, is a leader um, in not only the region, but the state. And um, I believe we have to continue to lead and welcome all that come here, no matter what their race, color, creed, religious background, sexual orientation, I, I believe we are better working together than we are um, trying to separate or build walls. So I would uh, encourage us that we uh, move forward on this. Councilman Plowman. Uh, thank you. I, I really wish that uh, Mr. Meske was here to participate in the, the conversation because he's always so eloquent in, uh, in his thoughts germane to these type of topics. Um, in reading through it, and I was anxious to read through it because um, I've had a few actual uh, phone calls and some emails regarding it, and I said, well, we got to get a good, a good look at the actual verbiage. Um, very simple to me, um, love thy neighbor is kind of what I get out of it. 
and and it, you know, I was looking for anything that might um, be construed as uh, legality or, or preferential or, or um, you know, inclusive or exclusive or anything like that. And um, I, when I read it, I, I read "Love Thy Neighbor," and I guess that's kind of that's that's kind of the modus operandi that I follow in my family, or I try to anyways, and I would hope that our, uh, that our city would uh, be willing to do the same because um, I know from, from the residents, the taxpayers, my neighbors, my family, um, and everybody else that that's the attitudes that they all have. So um, I'm, I'm supportive. Councilman Nelson. Thank you. I think the words are very straightforward also. I've had a couple people ask me what will you do after you support the resolution? And again, I think also just the concern from a legal standpoint, I, I think obviously this probably has been reviewed by our city attorney. I don't see any legalities in here. They are um, very straightforward words that I think we all um, should want to live by. Um, but I think the question that I was hearing is, it's fine if you pass it, but what are you going to do after that? Um, so I'm supportive of it as is. I think it's a challenge for, for us with um, what we do with those words. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm wondering why this is necessary. We have a uh, constitution in the United States that uh, reflects these words. We have a state constitution that says the same thing and we swear to uphold those constitutions along with our city charter. Um, I have a fear that it leads toward uh, sanctuary city status and I, and I don't like that. Um, yeah, you may laugh, but I mean, this is my opinion, folks. Just, and I, I, I'm free to express my opinion. Um, why, what necessitates this? I mean, it, we, we have uh, lots of uh, books on the shelves at City Hall where we've done studies, paid for them, and they sit there. And I suspect that's what happens to this. Um, uh, Councillor Nelson brought it up. I mean, what, what, what do we do after this? We pass it and it sits on a shelf. I mean, that's basically how I see it. It's, it's, we do that a lot, and uh, it is not law. It is not an ordinance. Um, it it's, makes you feel good, but uh, I, I don't see the necessity for it, uh, and that's my personal opinion. I, and I've had, I suppose, at least a dozen phone calls to that same, from constituents expressing that same viewpoint. Um, and, and we as a council, we, we, we tend to forget who, who elected us to office. We have many people come to the podium and ask for uh, uh, whatever, tax abatement or a resolution. And, and it's easy to be sold, a, a group of eight people to be sold by one person or a group of people coming here. But we, we very rarely think about the people that elected us. It happens tax abatement tax income and financing, um, resolutions. Um, think about who elected you here and how they feel. Have you heard from them? I mean, uh, Councillor Plowman said he's had a couple phone calls. I don't know what, if they're a pro or a con, but I'm here representing my ward and from the phone calls that I got, um, they said, I don't think we should have this resolution passed. That, I'm, I'm representing them. And so many times we forget those people. It's their city. <clears throat> Councilmember Osmus. Okay. I'm in favor of the resolution. I think it, uh, it sets a tone. It sets us um, moving in a positive direction of where we want to see the city, to what direction we want to have it go. I think it um, paints a picture that we're a welcoming community. And if we don't have people move into this community, we don't survive. We don't, we don't have people in our schools. We don't have people going to our clinics. We don't have people buying cars. We don't have people buying houses. And we don't have people opening businesses. We don't survive if we don't have 
people move into our community. And I find it interesting that this is very timely. Um, there was a, he, an article in the Minneapolis Tribune on Sunday about this very issue and just and um, talking about different communities and their main streets that are dying and those that are surviving. And, and it, it specifically pointed out that Wilmer has 60 Somali American businesses in its downtown that were started up and, and how many people then they employ. Um, we have to have that in order to have a city of Wilmer in order to represent. And so I'm in favor of this. Um, yes, it, it doesn't have any legal bearing. It might just sit on, on the wall or on a shelf, but it sets the tone. And it at least is a collective message that we as a city council say that we welcome all people into this community. Council member uh, Alvarado. Um, I, I get a little frustrated when uh, certain people say um, about um, our constituents, my constituents, um, my, my ward. Well, my ward, the people that I know, um, is a, a global community and we want to represent a global community. The people sees, uh, the people I know value a global community. We are a global community and, and to not recognize that and, and express an, an appreciation for that, we're, we're, we're stepping back. We have to go into the future and we have to make this a welcoming community. My constituents and my ward want this to happen. And so I would encourage um, that we move forward to this and we encourage that, um, you know, I don't, it's going to be words on a wall, but those words will set a precedence. People will come to, come to Wilmer and say, hey, I want to be here. They want me here. I agree with uh, Councilperson Osmus. It brings in new business. It brings in new blood. It brings in creativity. And that's what we need in our community. Um, the future is now. We've got to embrace it. Uh, I'm, I'm for it. Councilman Allman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I th um, in regards to the phone calls and the emails that I received, I guess they were, they were questions. I mean, we each uh, can be con contacted by our own constituents and by the taxpayers of Wilmer, and we can express to them our personal opinions. But um, what I was asked point blank is, um, how does the council feel? And basically what they're looking for is a unified message from the leadership of our city. That's, that's what they were desperately asking for is, okay, we know what this person feels like, and we know what this person feels like, and now I know how you feel, but how do you collectively, as, as a body of leadership, how do you feel? What, what are the words that you're willing to vote for and, and stand behind? And so, yeah, I'll, I'll echo it now a couple times. They maybe are just words, but they have weight. Um, because it would be a unified message. And like I said, if it held some legality, if there, was, if there was other stuff that could be read in between the lines, but it does seem pretty simple and straightforward to me, and, and it does not uh, warrant concern on my end. Now, if there's something I'm not reading correctly, uh, apologies, but, um, but the message I'm hearing is that the citizens of our city want a unified message from our leadership. Councilman Nelson. Thank you. Just want to clarify when I said those words, what will we do next? I think it's very clear that our residents are saying this is our city. It's each one of us. It's our city. And we all have the right for it to be a welcoming city. And if passing this resolution carries that message from the council, then I think that's important. It's not there. It's our city. And I think that's very clear um, with the message that we're getting. And I believe that that's what this resolution is simply saying. Councilmember Fagerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just wondering, our entrance signs, doesn't it say welcome to Wilmer now? Yeah. Should it say all are welcome to Wilmer? I mean. 
and it says area. Well, we better go to the county and have them say it too. I mean, to me, you either have it right here in your heart, and if you don't, you aren't going to abide by this. So I hope the police department aren't going to go out walking on the street and, well, do you agree with this? Otherwise, we're going to arrest you. Now, this is getting a little ridiculous. I'm sorry. I received, I'm sorry, Councilmember Nelson. I, I think we just need a legal clarification. Um, we've, a, we've asked to it and alluded to it, but this resolution is simply stating a statement as a welcoming city. I think Councilmember Plowman said it very eloquently. The community wants to know how the city council members feel. And I think that's why we're being asked to support this resolution. What legal, what legal ramifications are from passing this resolution? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, there's no legal ramifications to passing this resolution. It's, as has been noted, symbolic. It would be a statement of principle. That's the intended effect. Certainly, it's within the council's uh, authority to pass proclamations like this. It's just a matter of if the council thinks it's important and agrees with the principle stated. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I suspect that uh, this resolution is, is not just <clears throat> exact resolution, it's not just being brought to Wilmer. I believe it was in St. Cloud. I, I believe they're bringing it to, and they will bring it to many other communities. Um, anybody do their homework on Isaiah? Um, they're a registered lobbying group. They, register, they, they lobby the state legislature for money, our money, and uh, albeit for purposes they deem necessary and good, um, education and, and things like that. Um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, I received a number of phone calls on this as well. Um, I, I received phone calls on both sides of the, of the table. I received phone calls from people saying, Mr. Mayor, don't pass the proclamation. And I received phone calls from people saying, Mr. Mayor, I hope you pass the, the, this uh, um, resolution. resolution. I hope you do that for us. And the ones that said it both ways, I, I kind of asked the same question. What are you looking for? And what they're looking for is the community to say we are welcoming. Last week I attended an event put on by the Minnesota Chamber. And yes, I believe they're a lobbying group. Is that right, Mr. Okay, so they are a lobbying group. Wilmer had an 11% increase in population. Okay, they talked about all the money that comes to Wilmer because of our diverse workforce. Money that comes from other countries that we have nothing, we get nothing but money for it. It's not an expenditure against us. It's a net positive. And they talked about how great this community is because we have that. And I feel strongly that people need to feel welcome. And if people currently today don't feel welcome and we can pass a resolution and they feel welcome because we do that, we should do that. What is it going to do for us in the future? If it's not going to do anything for you, that's up to you. But I think Council Member Plowman said it the best. It's love your neighbor. And you're going to hear that maybe a little bit later today when I give my State of the City address, you're going to hear about loving your neighbor too. So it's not the last time you're going to hear it tonight. So. Do I think it's necessary? Do I think you're going to go across the rest of the state doing it? Is it going to lead to a sanctuary city? You know what? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And you know what? People are going to be people. And I want people to feel welcome to come to Wilmer. Because our diversity is what's growing our economy. I hope you all read the, paper, the West Central Tribune this morning, the article on immigration, where it started talking about some of the questions that are being asked. What does it cost? What are the dollar figures? And those are the things that the conversations we have to have. 
But at the end of the day, 60 plus new businesses in downtown Wilmer. These were businesses, buildings, that you could hardly give the buildings away a few years ago. And everybody's wondering what's going to happen with our downtown. Nobody's, nobody's going downtown. Now we have businesses, vibrant businesses. I was downtown today, had lunch downtown today with a business owner downtown. There's great things happening downtown. In the restaurant I was in, I was in Azteca restaurant for lunch. The place was packed. As we're sitting there having lunch, a business from outside of the city of Wilmer comes in and gets a great big box, and I mean, I kid you not, this big, full of food that they're taking back to their employees. Folks, that's what we want our downtown to do. We want a downtown that's vibrant. If we put a city hall downtown and all we do is build a city hall and nothing else, and all the other businesses close down, there's no reason to put it downtown. There's not going to be nothing there. But we have a vibrant downtown. Do we have a vibrant downtown like what Chaska has? No, we don't have the same downtown Chaska has, but we don't have the de same demographics Chaska has. Chaska had the same problem we had. Five years ago, you couldn't give away a building in downtown Chaska. Today, you can't buy one. Okay? Theirs is because of um, Amazon and those types of influences that have happened there. Theirs are different, but they're all different forces. So, do we want to move this forward to the city council meeting, or do we want to wait for Council Member Meske because he's the one that wanted it? I think, out of respect, we should wait till he's here to present it to the council. Are we okay with that? With that, we're adjourned.